here at the command line. And what I want to do first is demonstrate to you how I'm going to start completely from scratch. So it's the beginning of the project. I have no source code. I have nothing. I've got absolutely nothing. And I'm going to start working on a software project using Git. Now, one of the things I'm assuming here is that you know, Git's already installed on my local computer. If you haven't installed Git yet, that tutorial I pointed to you to in the Getting Started, there are instructions there for either Windows, Mac, and I believe Linux as well. So if you haven't got it yet running on your computer, just follow those instructions. But mine's all set up, and I'm not going to spend time on that. So I have a, um, a project here, and I want to... Um, or I don't have a project, I've got an empty directory, and I want to create a project and uh, start writing code and managing that code in Git. And so I've made a subdirectory called examples, so I'm just going to go down in there, and this is my project folder. This is where I'm going to put all my source code. To get started, can everybody see that okay? Yeah. So to get started, I'm just going to do a git init. And if we do an ls minus la, so look for hidden files, files that start with a dot, you'll notice a dot git subdirectory under in my current working directory. And that directory is where all the git magic happens. So that's where the, the database of revisions is being maintained by the git software. So if I just do a normal directory listing, I won't see that. Now, I'm going to create a couple of files to begin with, so I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to create a readme file initially, and I'll fill this out later, but I'll just create one now. So I've got it there, so that's a placeholder, and I'm writing software, so I'm going to start writing this little C program, and we'll have a main routine here. And we'll say printf hello world. So very sophisticated C program. So there, I've got a piece of software. And I want to manage this software under Git. So if I, do, I, I I'm kind of in that slide I had here a few minutes ago. I've got the project. I've got a Git repository set up. And now I'm starting to write code. I just modified two files. So I want to see where I'm at. I'm going to do a git status. And you'll notice it says, hey, you're on branch master, but there are no commits yet. You've never committed anything. Oh, there's these two untracked files. And remember, what untracked says is there's, there's these files in the project directory, but I don't know anything about them. Do you want me to track them? You know, they're untracked right now, meaning I'm not keeping track of them. And so I do want to um, I do want to manage these. So I want to track them. How do I do that? Does anybody remember from the slides what what we're going to do there? Git add. Git add. Right now I could do a git add and do these one by one. Uh, the other thing I could do is a git add, and I could just say dot, which means current directory in Bash cell lingo, right? So I'll just say git, and what that's going to do is it's going to look for any untracked files in the current directory, and it's going to add them. So if I do another git status after this, notice they changed from red to green because now they're tracked. So it says, okay, you've got no commits yet, but you're, you've got these two files that are now staged and ready to commit. So now let's go ahead and commit those. So I'm going to say git commit, and I don't really need the minus A because they're already staged. Um, and then now I'm in the editor. I didn't put a dash M on the command line. So I'm in VI here and I can put in a descriptive, you know, for human consumption message about what this change is all about. And I'll just say, hey, this is my initial commit. Okay, and now I've actually committed those changes. And if I do a git status, you'll see there's no changes, right? Because I haven't modified any files since the last commit. If I do a git log, I can see a list of all recent commits. At this point, there's only one commit. Notice the funky yellow hashtag here. This tag is basically a universally unique identifier that identifies that particular commit in my repository. And these get generated automatically. So I can revert back to any one of these 
commit IDs. I can also give my individual commits a more specific name. I can use a git tag command to say give that thing the name version 1.01 and then I can refer back to that mnemonic later. All right. Now, at this point I've got my awesome program and I'm really proud of it and I got my three teammates that are just waiting with bated breath for this awesome software that I'm writing. So now I want to share this. So that's what we're going to use GitHub for. Let's take a break and in our next video we'll show you how to push this local repository up to a shared GitHub repository that other developers can access.